this is a joint work with Ken Jada, and uh, this is a combination of our several papers. So um, my talk is about uh, some uh, new advantages uh, in uh, numerical dynamic programming. Uh, we are talking about uh, the computational methods. So you will see a lot of mathematics, not economics. <laughs> And uh, then I uh, talk some uh, new applications. So first, I will introduce uh, the numerical dynamic programming uh, very quickly because uh, uh, many people uh, they had already talked about that. Then I will talk about the three uh, new advantages. Uh, new advances. And the first one is uh, about uh, the shape preservation. And uh, then the second one is uh, uh, that is to take care of the uh, convergence of uh, infinite horizon problems and also the stability of the uh, numerical dynamic programming. Then after we have the stability, we need to think about, uh, okay, how can we do uh, more efficiently? So uh, then we, I will take this, talk about the second uh, method is called the uh, Hermit approximation. So we will use the Hermit information to get uh, the approximation and very quickly and efficiently. So <coughs> then for high dimensional problems, uh, these are still not enough, so uh, we can use the parallelization uh, today, my talk uh, is a uh, focus on high-dimensional problems. Uh, you, I usually assume if uh, the value functions they are continuous and smooth. And uh, then later, I will talk uh, some applications. Uh, first is uh, dynamic portfolio optimization with transaction costs, and uh, the second one is uh, uh, IAM uh, models uh, integrated assessment model uh, of climate and economy. Okay, uh, we will use the value function iteration method. So as uh, it's uh, focused on finite horizon problems and or uh, non-stationary dynamic programming problems. So uh, we have these value function iterations. So uh, I use X is for the uh, continuous state variables. Uh, theta is the discrete ones, and X could be uh, X could be uh, a vector, and the theta could be also a vector. And uh, usually, X is endogenous, and the theta is uh, exogenous. So uh, here is uh, some smooth functions, and A is the control vector. So uh, then we have can write it as its Bellman equations. So these are very general purpose. So uh, you don't need to think about uh, details about the utility function form, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> So there are uh, three major parts in this uh, dynamic programming. First one is uh, approximation. So uh, in, the f in these slides, uh, for when we do, we know this uh, value function at t plus one. So we need to compute this value function at vt. But uh, this is a continuous function. So we cannot represent it uh, completely. So we have to use approximation. Then second one, uh, so we usually use uh, Establishing polynomials in our uh, papers. And uh, then, uh, second one is the numerical integrations. So, we, uh, <laughs> something uh, they are random, and uh, we say it's uh, normal or log normal is very, that's very typical. So in that case, uh, uh, we often use uh, Gauss and Hermit quadratures. Then, uh, because our problems uh, we are very smooth, so uh, we use uh, for the optimization problems, uh, we can use the fast. Newton type uh, solvers, so uh, such as uh, MPSOL, because MPSOL is a, a very good uh, solver for uh, dense and uh, small problems. Why I say it's small? Because in fact, uh, it's not small, but uh, we can break it into a lot of small problems. So that's why we can use MPSOL. Okay, uh, these are some simple and uh, typical applications to prove our new methods can work well. So, uh, so then, uh, because of these problems, uh, we, uh, there are some ways to get the two solutions. So the first one is a very typical uh, optimal growth problems. Everyone knows Then uh, it's the development equations. And the second one is uh, the portfolio optimization problems. Uh, in this simple one, I assume there is no transaction costs. So, uh, so we wanted to maximize the uh, expected utility of the terminal wells. Then its a transition uh, of the wells is, uh, okay, uh, S is a stock uh, allocation, so R is the return of the stocks. So, and uh, this is WT is the wells, so wells minus the submission of uh, 
uh, stock allocation, so is the bank is uh, saved in bank, so RF is the risk free uh, return. So here is the, the new uh, Bellman equation. Then the third one is the multi country optimal growth problems. So uh, in this case, uh, there is a transaction cost here. Uh, oh, not transaction cost, sorry. <laughs> uh, there is an adjustment cost. Uh, so, uh, so here, theta is uh, also is the uh, shocks. So uh, this is uh, the <coughs> framework of our algorithm. Uh, it's for the general algorithm, but uh, uh, did not have uh, did not talk about uh, our new advantages. So it's very typical ones. And uh, so you can see there are the maximization steps. Uh, we first uh, we choose a lot of uh, approximation nodes. So uh, XI, so then at each XI, we calculate this uh, max uh, VI so value function at XI. So this is uh, a maximization problem. So we can see, uh, so if you have many, many approximation nodes, so you have uh, many optimization problems. Then uh, after we calculate this XI and VI, then we need to uh, Parallelize. Uh, we need to uh, uh, use some uh, fitting step uh, to get uh, the approximation of V. So uh, B is used for the parameters for the usually we say is coefficients. So there are some computational challenges for high dimensional problems. First, if we can use a smooth function approximation, such as polynomials. Then it will have no curse of dimensionality, and uh, because it's smooth, we are not using piecewise uh, linear interpolation. So because so we can use the fast Newton method to solve these optimization problems. So this will be a lot of speed up. But uh, since we using smooth function polynomials, then because polynomials, uh, they did not have uh, concavity or monotonicity. We, and they are not, uh, yet we are not so sure it can preserve them. So if it is not preserved, then your objective function in your optimization problems may be not a convex or concave function. If it's uh, not a convex optimization problem, then the optimizer solver, optimization solver should uh, find the global optimizer. That's a very hard problem. So you should be careful to choose this thing. Then, okay, after we think, uh, okay, this shape is not a big problem. And uh, then, in fact, we can also speed up a lot if we can use the slope information efficiently. You, when you see, we just see, okay, we have XI, then we compute the VI. VI is the level information. But we, in fact, we can also get the slope information easily. So use this slope information can be uh, make the algorithm very fast. And uh, the second way is the parallelization. So that's a... Uh, Many people have already talked about the grid computing. So my framework is uh, a bit of difference uh, using some MPI uh, framework, so master work framework. So it has its own advantages uh, compared with <laughs> grid computing. So it depends. If you don't have grid, then of course, <laughs> this is your choice. <laughs> OK, this is a approximation. Uh, we usually use the Chebyshev -Shep polynomials. So uh, T is the basis function. So uh, we is the so the value function is spanned by this basis function uh, with these B coefficients. So uh, our <coughs> objective is uh, to find these B coefficients. So in the multi-dimensional uh, way, we use the complete polynomials. So this complete polynomial is has no curse of dimensionality. If so, uh, it will be. And we sh show that uh, it has almost the same accuracy with the tensor 
polynomial progress emission. <coughs> so uh, here we talk about our new. Oh, uh, because uh, uh, the number of terms here, so if you have the uh, dimension 10, so if you, it's a uh, tenth product, then your degree is, uh, for example, is the degree is four, so it's uh, four by four, four by whatever, four power 10. But it's a complete one, is uh, four plus 10, 14, 14 choose four. So that's a small number compared to with uh, it has no cost of dimensionality. <laughs> no, there you the, These problems, right, this is where the sufficiently smooth phrase yeah. sweeps a lot of stuff under the rug. Um, if you have a, a function that has a bounded behavior for the cross partials, uh, which is the case here, then um, you can get good global approximations without having the complexity of the function go exponential with dimension. Is that just to the space? Yeah, just to restrict the space. But in the space, um, actually, there are some, there are some here. Okay, the space in general is uh, reproducing kernel over the space is a very long the Jerusalem paper by Regal and Bush and Kowski on the same side. Now, the uh, first dimensionality is going to bite you if you have kinks in your function and high dimensions. But if it's, um, it's like with quadrature, C0 functions have first dimensionality. C2 and above, no, there's no first dimensionality for anybody in those There's C2 and above functions. How about problems are focused about on the most problems that are going to be to also have a good shape? Yeah. So, as uh, now let's talk about uh, the shape preservation. So, when we, how to deal with the shape preservation for polynomial approximation? So we add some constraints. So uh, here, say, why, why is the, the new shape nodes? So they are, they could be same or different with the approximation nodes. Uh, they are here. So, but uh, so we say at uh, this. Uh, Ship nodes. We say these approximation functions uh, first derivative should be positive, and uh, its a second derivative should be negative. So it means so that monotone and uh, concave in at these uh, ship nodes. So yeah, it cannot guarantee it will be ship preserving at every point, but uh, this partial ship preserving. In many times, it's good, it's good enough. So you, so you choose a bunch of nodes, and, and there you impose the restriction? Yes, so yes. Why wouldn't that just be the same as approximation nodes? It could be same, uh, but it could be also different. So you can choose some other points. Uh, you typically need more. Yeah, yeah, usually you need more. Because this, oh wait, the shape restrictions, in the, the pure problem is what we call semi infinite programming. You have an infinite number of restrictions. Um, theory, there are sufficiently large n, there are sets where you just have f f n points and that'll be equally good. So, um, but they typically need more. Yeah, so, uh, so we have the same degree approximation, but uh, after we have these restrictions, so you can increase the stability. Then uh, we see these uh, numerical problems. For these uh, optimal growth problems, these, uh, we have a uh, very smooth terminal value function, so there is no binding. So this problem is so nice. So, but if we don't impose the shape constraints, what happens? If we just use the value functions, iteration without the shape preservation, these errors you see, is about a 10 percentage, could it be. But uh, if we impose this shape preservation, the errors are almost uh, constant and uh, small. So, what does that mean? The time key. Oh, this is the uh, stages. So, uh, when you, uh, I run from, uh, for example, uh, at the 15th, uh, when 
the year 15. So year 15, uh, you see this is the L infinite error for the consumption. So this is uh, for the no ship preservation. And this has ship preservation, the L infinite error over the value function, or uh, over the consumption policy function. And the number of approximation, or approximation signs is the same in those experiments? Yes, yeah, as a number of approximation nodes, and the that approximation nodes, it is all of them are same, and also same degree. Yes. So uh, the only difference is the coefficients, uh, the because uh, now I have the constraints of, of the shape, so the coefficients will be a bit different with uh, the one without shape preservation. So this is the L1 LS, uh, you have you can see the similar pattern. Yeah, just to change the coefficients. The no, you say the error is bigger. It just means uh, uh, maybe use a summation of the error is a little big, but uh, this will the shape shape will be much better. Mm. Okay, I can show you one example. So, yeah. So this uh, you ha you have uh, four points. Uh, so you have uh, say uh, this is your v i and x i. So I can approximate it perfectly. Do you think this is better than uh, okay? I have two uh, difference. So this is the shape preserving one. This is a without a shape preserving. So without a shape preserving, you see so many vehicles. Yeah, and uh, these approximate nodes, they are perfect. Oh, by the way, there, there's, a, there's um, we have to do over identification, under identification. Mm. Mm. So, so basically, without the shape restrictions, there's a continuum of solutions. Mm. If you just do pure interpolation, that's exact identification. You can't impose shape on that. You throw in extra basis elements, and then you um, Shape and then there's a selection criterion. So just the, so the simple stuff. But, but this is better optimization probably helps you so much. Well, yeah, and then as you iterate backwards, you're closer and closer and closer. Yeah, so if we, yeah, if you have no shape preservation, so when you do the optimization problems, you you say, oh, what's your maximum? <laughs> maximum will be here or here. <laughs> so that will be very bad. See, the idea here is that you mm. have information, use it. Okay. So <laughs> the under identification and then kind of like Clark reconstruction and that kind of stuff where then you, you pick something that is much better. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I, I think, uh, yeah, yeah. It, we can have uh, a bit higher degree of approximation. So that uh, has some uh, more. Uh, no, we can. Yeah. You, you, there's this, it's under identified and so then yeah. there's this extra penalty. Yeah, because so this is a higher degree uh, one. Well, I mean, you could yeah. use the same idea as the other mm -hmm. Yeah. So after we take care of this shape preservation, yeah, so we say, uh, yes, it's the value function now is not so oscillating too much. And uh, so we can s improve this uh, algorithm efficiently if we can use the Hermit information. So f first uh, we say uh, this is uh, envelope theorem. From this, uh, so x is a state variable, so it's a maximization problem uh, with some constraints. So envelope theorem tells us uh, the uh, gradient of uh, h is equal to this uh, uh, a bit complicated formula. So here lambda i is, uh, or lambda star is the uh, Lagrange multiplier of uh, constraint g, and um, mu is the multiplier of h. Sometimes uh, it will be very painful to write this uh, explicit formula of these derivatives because uh, this f function is a derivative of x. 
why we we have to find this uh, derivative explicit by ourselves? Because the control is uh, A. Optimization just take care of the derivatives over A, not X. So then we need to write this uh, explicit formula of this gradient by ourselves. And uh, many times, so the, these functions uh, is very complicated. Uh, so you don't like uh, to do this by yourselves. Okay, then there's uh, one simple way to do that. Okay, we add one dummy variable, Y. And a dummy control, dummy constraint, x, y minus y equals zero, then replace every previous x by y. Theoretically, they are equivalent. But use this formula, we can get the slope of h easily. OK, just one number directly, tau. Tau is the multiplier of this dummy constraint. It can give directly by optimization solver, even in MATLAB. So yeah. Oh, yeah. The additional variable and additional constraint. But uh, this one, uh, if uh, a good solver, it will not uh, take uh, more time because uh, they can use the substitution method uh, to replace this. But uh, they can. But finally, they can also. Yeah, then the so some part they will tell us yeah, this. Uh, no, not MATLAB. Yeah, ma not a MATLAB. Yeah, in Ampos, uh, it, it can do that. So Yes, um, I, I know a, a, friend of us, a friend of mine was used them, and they're very effective. But the other thing is, you use Ampos, you get analytic derivatives. Efficiently computed. So, given the gap average, you don't need the complex papers. That's how Ample does it? No, no, no. Ample actually took calculus and got an A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in that case, uh, so you, you can get uh, these uh, derivatives uh, easily and uh, efficiently. So, no more cost. So, you can say almost had no cost. Then, after we get uh, this. Uh, Level information, slope information. So we use uh, some ways uh, to do fitting. So one just a general ways is use the least square problem to fit it. So this one, in fact, can be also computed very efficiently. <coughs> so we apply this Hermit approximation to a, a simple problem the multi-stage portfolio optimization problem without the transaction cost. So we will see the comparison between this uh, Hermit approximation and uh, the its uh, previous uh, Lagrange approximation. So this star is the Lagrange approximation. Uh, I use uh, five approximation nodes. So you can see the error is about uh, one or zero digits. Then, uh, okay, I use the same approximation nodes, but I use the Hermit approximation method. So this is a, a square, so it improves to four or three digits accuracy. Then, okay, then I say, I, I, then how about I add more uh, approximation nodes? So I use 10 approximation nodes, but I use Lagrange, so this is a plus. I this uh, coincidentally, they are same accuracy. <laughs> then, okay, we also again, again same hermeter, so it improves, and uh, then double notes, then, okay, five or five, six digits accuracy. So you can clearly see uh, the hermeter approximation, it has the same, almost the same accuracy with the double notes, with the Lagrange approximation with the double notes. So how about the time? So we compare this time. So when we use the time nodes, it's that too fast. <laughs> yeah, it's a six, uh, six uh, periods, so it's still too fast. So it's a 17 seconds Hermita approximation, and here is 33 seconds. So it's a t 
takes a commit approximation takes a half of time of the Lagrange model approximation. So I said one dimension for me, so too simple. <laughs> Let's see uh, three country models. So three country models here, we have three dimensions. So data have, have three continuous data variables. Okay, see this uh, uh, dots. Uh, okay, uh, we use 125 approximation nodes. So five nodes per dimension. So we use the tensor product, uh, tensor collator. So this is the time, so, uh, but uh, I use the log time of the time. And uh, this is the log time of the accuracy. So we can see about uh, two of how two accuracy, yeah? Two digits accuracy. So oh, uh, that's uh, accuracy is too bad. So we say, okay, we need to use uh, 1,000 approximation, 10 nodes per dimension. Okay, then accuracy, oh, is five, Digit accuracy almost, but the time is uh, much more. So it's about uh, eight times more. Then let's see if we use a meta parameterization. We use only 125 no nodes. Same. Hmm? You. This is, uh, you have only 125 nodes approximate minutes. Here you use 1,000 approximate minutes. Hmm? Oh, this is at a different point. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think, uh, I think it's a different point of the dates, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is the worst case, and this is the worst case. Yeah, something like that. So uh, you see, we use only the same time with this one, but the same accuracy with this one. So uh, we save eight times time. Yeah, we we are okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then we see the six dimensional problems. We have six countries, and it's also stochastic. So we have uh, additional uh, exogenous uh, discrete states here. So uh, we use uh, three points per dimension for Hermit approximation. It achieves the three digits accuracy. But <laughs> if we increase it to six, uh, use the Lagrange multiply or Lagrange uh, approximation, is also the same three digits accuracy. But what's the time difference? Here is uh, a bit more than half an hour. Here, one day and a uh, one and a half a day. So, yes, this. Uh, executed by GAMS code. If I use the uh, fortune code, yeah, that would be much faster. But uh, the ratio between this time are still the same. So uh, we see for six dimension problem, we have 64 times less nodes and 55 times faster. Yeah for her to reach the same accuracy. So now uh, we say, OK, now we want to solve more com Yeah? Um, just a, a quick question. The, um, in partial equilibrium, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's not just the value function that's concave, the consumption function is concave as well. So you could go to a, a, you know, one more Solve with the, you know, you could do policy function iteration and solve for the consumption function. I think, yes, that's a, uh, could be. Uh, this is finite horizon. Yeah. There's no yeah. Policy function yeah. Yeah, yeah. We are talking the finite horizon problem. So you, uh, if it's an infinite horizon problem, yeah, it could be a, a good uh, direction to do that. The consumption function is concave even mm. in the finite horizon. 
Yeah, yeah, oh, but okay. yeah. No, no, no. policy function iteration is not valid in Firefly and Problem because the policy function changes it. Why would you? Well, okay, because it depends on what you're doing. Just following along the cycle from the Oh, maybe Chris uh, just means that he just uh, say uh, when we do a uh, value function addition, we impose a shape on the value function. We could right. also impose a shape on the consumption. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, also could uh, do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess it will improve, but uh, I'm not so sure uh, how yeah. much it can gen improve. Our general experience <laughs> is that the you have one digit less accuracy with the decision rules that you do with the value function. I mean, we, we know, we've had other places where we've actually done that comparison. You basically do a digit. Yeah. Um, but so it's um, that's that's the thing. I think you have to. No, no, it, the thing is that, remember, the consumption or the decision rules are related to the gradient of the value function. And the quality of approximation to the gradient is less. And so you, you can have a function that could be a good approximation of G to within four digits, but F prime and G prime could be um, farther apart. Yeah. That's just... You could, you could say, though, that the thing that you can actually hope to measure in this particular in this data is the consumption function, and so that's the appropriate um, object. No, it's accurate. not the appropriate object here because the thing is, by having a value function, mm -hmm. you impose the integrability properties that should exist across the decision rules. If you just, if you just solve up the decision rules independently of each other, then you, the standard integrability conditions of, uh, of demand theory could be violated by the different approximations. So um, going with the value function, whatever it implies about the decision rules, is going to have inherently in it a satisfy integrability conditions across the edge. Whereas if you otherwise, you know, otherwise that would be having another restriction that you have to impose on the decision rules. Yeah, so uh, the next uh, uh, way is uh, to do parallelization to improve the numerical dynamic programming algorithm. Uh, we already discussed, uh, see, uh, say this uh, maximization step, uh, we need to solve so many uh, VI at the different uh, XI. They are independent at the same stage T. So why we don't use it? Because this is the most time consuming part. You, we need to solve optimization problems. It's a very time consuming. It's not a simple arithmetic uh, problem. So let it work. So we use the master work system. So uh, it's uh, through MPI uh, framework. So we have there's a master process and a work process. The, master, the work process solves these problems independently. So each worker solves uh, one or a, a block of uh, optimization problems. Then the must one uh, distributor this works and collect the results and then <coughs> do the fitting step, something like that. Okay, so uh, we let's uh, solve uh, uh, multi-country problems. In this um, problem, uh, we say it's a uh, eight-dimensional problems. We have four countries and uh, uh, K is the capital and uh, they are continuous. And the theta is uh, the strokes, so uh, it's a discrete, but uh, it has a seven, is a Markov chain, so it has a seven uh, different values uh, for each dimension. So, uh, and also we have uh, another IID shocks uh, here, so as your next capital is a uh, uh, depreciated one plus the investment uh, plus some uh, IID shocks there. So this one, in fact, uh, is a very time-consuming problem. So uh, <coughs> we uh, separated it uh, into 2,401 tasks uh, per value function generation. And uh, each task uh, that contains uh, 2,400 uh, cell uh, one optimization problems. So uh, this is uh, 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 run by uh, HT Condo uh, MW system. So we see uh, it uh, takes uh, eight hours to solve the, uh, to run these steps, 
But if we don't do parallelization, it will take uh, 17 days. So, uh, so we, we use the 50 uh, works here. So the power efficiency we can see is uh, almost 100 percentage because uh, this is very time consuming computation. So, so that's why you can parallelize it so well. And uh, also we tried a different uh, number of uh, processes. So we tried 100 and 200. Uh, so the efficiency is still uh, 92 percentage. So uh, now if previously is eight hours, so now it's only two hours, uh, a bit more than two hours. Okay, now I uh, talk about some uh, new applications. So previous applications are so simple, no one are interested in them. <laughs> Okay, this uh, is a dynamic portfolio optimization problem with transaction costs. So uh, still is the uh, maximization is the expected utility of the terminal wells, but uh, now there is a transaction costs here. So, uh, oops. yeah, so uh, here the tau is the proportional transaction costs. So uh, data is the, uh, buy or selling part of the stocks. So X is the ratio uh, of the stocks uh, allocation and Y is the allocation, oh, Y is the, uh, the transaction cost. So, so uh, this is uh, some uh, mathematical form. So uh, we just uh, quickly go through that. Uh, on the then this is it's the uh, Bellman equations. So yeah, it looks not so complicated. Uh, so you can have many uh, stocks. And uh, so I run uh, one simple problem with uh, six periods and uh, with three stocks. So there is uh, no trade illusion. So if you are inside uh, this, uh, uh, this region, then you will not trade it uh, because uh, the uh, existence of uh, transaction costs. If there is no transaction costs, then as we know there is a Merton ratio. So uh, usually it's inside, at uh, uh, one point inside there, but uh, it's hard to prove it theoretically. Yeah. So this is long, in, in fact, it's very quickly in a uh, in lap laptop. So then I, I also learned some examples uh, with seven assets uh, in uh, parallelization, so it also it could be very fast. <sighs> so this is, uh, it will be uh, five days, but uh, now it's only, uh, uh, now it only have seven minutes, could it be. <laughs> then uh, last application is in the climate change. So uh, recently, uh, President Obama uh, is urging us uh, to take care of, uh, <laughs> take actions uh, on climate change. <laughs> so let's see uh, what's the current literature on these things. Current one uh, is the IAM, uh, it's uh, called the Integrated Assessment Models, and uh, but it is a component, composed of two uh, components. Uh, one is economic side, another is a climate model. So, but uh, their interaction is uh, often limited. So, economic production emits uh, carbon CO2, and uh, carbon CO2 increases the uh, uh, temperature, and uh, then temperature affects uh, the production. So, uh, this uh, simple interaction between them. But uh, uh, these uh, existing models uh, they cannot study this uncertainty world well, because they usually. They are, most of them are deterministic, and uh, they are also myopic, uh, and they think uh, it is a perfect foresight uh, forecast, but uh, that's uh, not uh, true. Okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, most uh, typical and standard uh, model, uh, it's a uh, uh, dice, so it's from uh, Professor William Nordhaus. So uh, uh, in the economic side, uh, so this is a production, it's uh, dependent on the uh, capital K, and uh, this is a damage factor, so it's a, this is a temperature. So if your uh, temperature is higher, then uh, this damage will be smaller. So in fact, damage will be higher, so <laughs> this number will be smaller. <laughs> and uh, so here the you have the emission control over it, and uh, mu is the 
um, emission uh, policy choices to uh, some Im control rate. Uh, so the climate change uh, in the climate system, so this uh, has three dimensional carbon concentration levels. So it's one is the in the atmospheric and the second one is the uh, surface ocean and the third one is the deep ocean. And the temperature is also separated into two levels. Uh, one is the uh, in or atmospheric temperature and the second one is the uh, lower ocean temperature. So, uh, so there's uh, some emissions uh, have from this production and uh, it's also dependent on the emission control rate. So if you higher in emission control, then you have less uh, emission. So, okay, so that's also uh, there's a little forcing, little 80 forcing depends on the carbon. Uh, so this is the carbon. So uh, if you have more carbon in atmospheric, uh, then uh, there's more issue forcing. Okay, uh, there's uh, many uncertainty and risks uh, in this uh, uh, climate change. So uh, first, uh, say okay, we have product sh productivity shocks uh, and we have all the taste shocks, uh, and uh, yuck. and uh, then uh, there's uh, many of the parameter uncertainties. Uh, we don't know these parameters. In fact, uh, we just uh, guess it out, but uh, who knows which one is right? And also, there's uh, many model uncertainty. So there are so many types of um, uncertainty. So uh, we see. Uh, First, okay, uh, we, if there are some abrupt irreversible uh, climate changes, then what should we do? That's very important because it will be persistent there. And, uh, okay, I will uh, see the uh, go job of that. And uh, these are our uh, design models. So we use the DICE models, and, but uh, we uh, plus this stochastic. Uh, uh, same uh, damage factor and the uh, production function, and also the uh, could be much smaller. In Dice model, he used uh, uh, 10 years, and now it's shrink to five years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, maybe even smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is uh, some uh, uh, mathematical formulas. So we, it depends on these product shocks, and also uh, this is a jump J. So it's uh, uh, representing the tipping element. Uh, so if it happens, then it will persist there. So this diamond pool means uh, it has uh, eight dimensions. So this, is three, this one is, in fact, is a six dimensional continuous variables, and uh, this also continues that J is a discrete. And uh, it's 600 years. We use one year as a time step. So it's uh, 600 value function relations. And also, we uh, discuss the Epstein's in uh, preference, so uh, we can transform it to uh, standardized standard DP models. So it's uh, by a uh, simple transformation. So before we talk uh, of these things, uh, we should check our accuracy. So we see uh, first we say because uh, if they are deterministic models, then we can solve it using a large scale optimization problem to solve this control problem bigger size, but it can solve it well, like uh, a house did. Then <laughs> we see, uh, then we use our numerical diamond programming to solve these uh, same problems to compare their differences. So we always see the accuracy is uh, four or five digits, so and uh, only eight minutes. So that's fast uh, in the in a laptop, and uh, this. Uh, is a more uh, general purpose. Uh, so we are when we have uh, three tipping points, uh, one tipping point, or a, a lot of uh, other things. So uh, so we can see solve time is uh, 16 minutes or uh, uh, 16 hours. It's the most uh, most complete one. Yeah, this one is a uh, uh, nine-dimensional problem. Okay, so we can tell President uh, Obama. It should have a big increase of carbon can tax if we consider these uncertainties. So, uh, if we say so, uh, if once this tipping happens, then it will have 2.5 damage, then it increases from 37 to 44. Then, if we say there's one disaster case, so it will have 28 percentage deduction of production. But the probability is very small. It's only 0.1 percentage at the year 2100. 
but it's still big impact. So it's the carbon tax is 124. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, my talk. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm. Mm.